Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about tables in assembly programming. But before we get to that, let's just go back to uh, something that uh, I talked about last time. And that was where our program starts in memory. So what I told you last time was almost entirely true, but not completely. So like I said uh, a while back, I don't want to overwhelm you and throw everything at you at once. And not only will it become uh, overwhelming, but if you don't have the right context, it can be uh, confusing. So what am I talking about? Well, I said that um, uh, the code starts at address 0801. <clears throat> That's what I told you last time. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's almost true. It's almost true. So what's the deal? Well, I didn't want to confuse you with this part up here. But let's just get this out of the way. So, here's the thing. Let's look at uh, the Commodore 64 memory map. This uh, great web page here. Uh, we have briefly looked at it before. So uh, this uh, web page contains all the memory addresses uh, that are occupied uh, or used in some way by the Commodore 64. So if we look at address 0800 here, it says, first of all, it says uh, this area from 0800 to 9FFF or this number in decimal. This area is the basic area. So this is the area <coughs> that we have looked at uh, a few times before, the free memory area that we can use. So that starts at 800. But the actual address 0800, it says unused. And it also says it must contain a value of zero so that the basic program can be run. In other words, we don't want to use the actual address 0800. So what well, that means that the actual code starts at 0801, which was what I told you last time. So 0801, that's the absolute beginning for our code. All right, sure, whatever. Well, I'm ju not just talking about our assembly code because there's something we haven't talked about yet. And as I said, let's just get this out of the way right now. This thing right here, basic upstart two with a main in parentheses. This thing actually generates some basic code for us. Now we haven't talked about basic programming, and that's not really what we're going to do, but I need to show you something. So let me start up my Commodore 64 here. So uh, maybe you have done some programming uh, in basic uh, in the 80s or whatever, but in basic programming, we specify a line number and uh, what people often did in the 80s, they started at line number 10 and then they just uh, continued on by adding 10 to the next line. So let me show you. I'm gonna make a very, very small basic program. So line number 10, I'm just gonna write print, hello, and I'm gonna make a new line, line 20. I'm gonna say print, how are you? And line 30, print, I hope you are well. All right, so now I've made a very short basic program with three lines of code, line 10, line 20, and line 30. And all this does is it prints text to the screen. 
says so right here, print. Uh, there's no spelling mistake there, but whatever. So when you write a basic program like this, you can run it by simply writing the command run, and that's when you run your basic program. So we run the program and the text is written to the screen. Okay, well, here's the thing. Uh, I'm sure you have loaded in uh, games uh, on the Commodore 64. Maybe you loaded in from tape, or maybe you loaded in from diskette. So let me just show you very quickly. Let me just um, reset my emulator. Like that. All right, so now I'm going to load in a game on the Commodore 64. So I'm going to write load. And by the way, both print, run, load, all those are basic commands. Commands in the basic programming language, which can be good to remember. But now I'm going to load from the sketch. Or, uh, first of all, let's insert our diskette. So let me just insert a game in drive 8, my disk drive. And I'm going to insert one of my favorite Commodore 64 games, Jumpman Jr. So I'm going to insert that. So now I have a, a game or a diskette in my disk drive. So now I can write load and an asterisk in quotation marks, comma 8, comma 1. If you loaded games on the Commodore 64 from disk before, this looks familiar. So very quickly, what's going on with this command? Well, load, that's obvious. You want to load something from disk. Now this asterisk means load the first file on the disk. So whatever you, we could have written a, an actual file name here. But if you just write an asterisk, that's the first file on the disk. So comma 8. 8, that's the, uh, the number of the disk drive. So you could have four disk drives and it would go 8, 9, 10, 11. But um, I'm sure a lot of people had only one disk drive. So comma 8, that's the first disk drive. Comma 1, what's that? Well, this is a little technical, but when you specify comma one here at the end, it means that we want to load this thing that we're going to load from disk now into a certain memory address. We want to load this from the disk into a certain address in the Commodore 64 RAM. Where is that memory address? Where when we write uh, comma 1 here at the end, then we're telling the Commodore that, um, okay, the address in the RAM where we want to load this in, that's specified by the two first two bytes in the file that we're loading. So we have a file on our disk, on the, our diskette, and that spe specific file at the very beginning of that file, the two first bytes are the memory address where we want to load this in. That's a destination in the RAM where we want to load this program in. So that's what this comma one means. So let me just load this now. And uh, let me speed this up. A little bit, let's see, there we go. All right. So now I have loaded the contents of the, the first file on the disk into a certain place in the Commodore 64 memory. And everything went fine, no error messages, so the loading process went fine. So you probably remember that once you had loaded a game, you had to do something else. That's right, you have to write run. So by writing run, pressing enter, we are going to run what we just loaded in. So let me write run here. And sure enough, that starts the game. In this case, we're not quite there yet. But, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, 
so let me just do this and hopefully yeah there we go there's our game so it would be fun to play the game but let's just continue on with our code here so what happened now well we loaded the file from disk into a certain place in the Commodore 64 RAM. When that was done, uh, we wrote the command run, and that actually started our code. So, by the magic of video editing, now we're back to before I ran the game. So, now I've just loaded the game, I haven't written run yet. So I could write run now, and our game would start. But instead of doing that, I'm going to do something else. So again, if you did some programming in BASIC, uh, you know that if you want to view your code, you can write a list and your BASIC code will be written to the screen. Now, what happens if I write list now? I haven't made a BASIC program. I have just loaded a game into the memory. Let's try to write list right now. Well, now we get this. So this is actually a short basic program. Very short. It's just one line. It's line number 2003. And what happens at that line number? Well, it's the basic command SYS. So SYS, sys, the sys command in basic that starts uh, a machine language program or an assembly language program and it starts at the specified memory address here it's specified in decimal which you usually do in basic programming but if we take a look at our calculator 2059 in decimal that's 080b in hexadecimal that means at uh, this memory address, that's the very start of the game. So I'm going to try to quickly wrap this up, but as I said, I just wanted to get this out of the way. And trust me, it's going to make, make sense uh, in the end. Because this thing right here, a line number and the sys command with a memory address. That's what's actually run when we write the command run here. So the run command, uh, it just, if you haven't specified a line number, it's going to run the first ba uh, line or basic code that's in memory right now. And as you could see, when I write list like that, I get this. There are no other lines in the memory, Commodore 64 memory right now. Which means when I write run, this is the only thing it can run. This is the first line, the first and only line. So that's what happens when you write run. You run this code, yeah, this line number. Okay, so what does that have to do with this? Well, basic upstart to main this little thing this right here is not assembly in and of itself it's not exactly assembly programming this is just something that uh, the author of kick assembler has made for us to make life a little easier but what this thing actually does it creates a tiny basic program for us creates this basic program 10 SYS 2064 this little basic program is what this thing actually does so it creates line number 10 and it creates the SYS command and a memory address so now, finally, here's the point. 
What about this thing? Well, this is what I said was the start of a program. So it's not quite true because the start of our program is up here. This is the first memory address that we are putting something into. So what's actually put into this address is this thing right here. And every one of these are bytes. So we have one byte, two byte, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bytes. These ten, byte, ten bytes are crammed into memory from this memory address. So if I take my calculator and I write ten, ten bytes, and I change to hexadecimal, and I just add 0801. We end up with zero, uh, yeah, eight zero eight zero B, the memory address zero eight zero B. Uh, so that's where our code starts. But what we usually do to get a more clean number is uh, that we start our code at zero eight ten instead. So. Um, our actual code starts at 0810 because of this thing right here. All right. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And we spent a lot of time just talking about this, but it's important to understand actually what's going on. Because this, without this thing, we, we, if we just wrote main here, and started writing code down here and just sent that to the Commodore 64, it wouldn't know what to do. We need to have this thing at the very beginning to kick our uh, kickstart our program, our assembly program. Because the Commodore 64 is based around a basic system. You need basic needs to, to kickstart our assembly program. Okay, this was a lot. I hope you didn't get bored or anything, but now we got that out of the way. And we know that this is the actual start of uh, where we're cramming code into, but our actual program starts at 0810 because of this. All right, so before we end today's episode, I just need to mention that uh, the SYS command, that's a basic command, that's, uh, that starts a machine language program. So SYS start a machine language program at st starting from this memory address. That's what the SYS command does. All right, so this episode didn't turn out quite the way I had planned. And that means that we will be talking about tables next time. But for now, bye bye.